happened. These baseless attacks have been repeatedly debunked, and it reeks of fear. Joining me now is Angela Rye and Patricia Murphy. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Angela, 65% of Democrats for Hillary. How scared is the right? Probably very scared, but even uh, folks that may be supporting other Democratic potential candidates may be a little worried also. Our beloved vice president is a very distant second with only 13 percent. But we've already seen the right wing is scared, period. They're scared of our president. They're scared of the democratically controlled Senate. Um, and as a result, they are working against any type of agenda that would move the country forward. Now, uh, Patricia, after uh, Hillary's concussion before a testimony of Benghazi, the right wing was on the attack. Watch this. I guess she passed out somewhere. Is she unconscious somewhere? When you don't want to go to a meeting or a conference or an event, you have a diplomatic illness. We both have great respect for uh, Secretary Clinton, and uh, you're a Roman Catholic, as am I, so we're now calling this the Immaculate Concussion. How could she get a concussion when she's been ducking everything? I mean, this is some ugly stuff. Someone falls down, have a concussion, they later testify. Is this a sign of how ugly it's going to get, Patricia, if she, in fact, runs? Yes, it is. I mean, in a word, yes, it is. And I think that a lot of this has to do with the way Republicans are addressing this issue in such personal terms. It really is no coincidence that Hillary Clinton is at the end of those attacks. But if you go back and look at how she actually handled this, she did go up to the Hill. She did eventually testify. And she said, I take full responsibility. And I think that is what Americans want to hear our leaders say. So when Republicans now are continuing to say what happened in Magaza, we want more reports. These are not bipartisan calls. They're partisan calls for further investigations. It feels a lot like last year's Fast and Furious investigations, which ended up in really a very partisan attack on Eric Holder and holding him in contempt for the first time. And so th I think these are serious issues. Fast and Furious was serious. Benghazi is serious. But the way that Republicans are going after Hillary Clinton in such a partisan fashion, I think, demeans the seriousness and demeans Republicans in the process. Angela, Emily's List, uh, the group dedicated to electing pro-choice Democratic women, launched a six-figure campaign to elect a female president. Here's part of the ad. I want your reaction. The future of Washington, D.C., January 20th. I am here because of all the fearless pioneer women who fought 200 years ago at Seneca Falls. I'm here because of the elected women that have come before me. They paved the path for the first woman president and the next. That's the American way. We don't give up. And this is just for the beginning. Effective ad, Angela. I've, I found some women younger than you. <laughs> Well, Rev, it's not only very effective, it's reminiscent of some of what we've seen with um, the young man, Kid President. Um, he's made it all the way into the White House with um, some of the things he's done. And it's really nice to see young people being inspirational about pursuing politics despite the mess that we have going on inside the Beltway. So the one thing that's also really, really important is not just this ad, but the way in which the media has been instrumental in changing mindsets. Um, everything from Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean, you know, Lean In, to um, the number of hosts that are women on this network to, you know, Veep um, on another network. There are all types of women in powerful roles. Um, and, and of course, Clinton's last presidential campaign where she talked about shattering the glass ceiling. All of those things have laid the groundwork for this. Um, and we've seen the American people react in a way where they've elected a record number of women to the House and to the Senate. And if you look at the House's record, um, with Nancy Pelosi as our last speaker, there was a record number of bills passed. Yeah. And this time around, um, there's not much getting done. So I think the country's ready for it. Um, and, and we're definitely looking forward to seeing what uh, Secretary Clinton decides to do. Well, Patricia, the country is ready for it, it seems. Uh... Look at the uh, new polls. Ninety percent of voters in battleground states would vote for a qualified woman candidate from their party. Eighty-six percent say America's ready to elect a woman president. Seventy-two percent believe it's likely America will elect a woman president in the next presidential election. Seventy-two percent. Is this just another sign that the country wants Hillary Clinton to run, Patricia? 
Well, I think it's hard to ask a hypothetical question about a woman running for president in the next four years and not assume that we're all talking about Hillary Clinton. There really is nobody else on the horizon like her. She is a she's a celebrity, yes, but she is also a transformative figure, and she is such a much better candidate than she was in 2008. Democrats want her to run. I've talked to a lot of Democrats about this. Nobody will join another campaign. Nobody will give a dollar. This field is frozen until Hillary Clinton decides what she wants to do. It's because Democrats love her, they also believe she would win. And that is the most important part to Democrats over the next four years. And so I think the country is ready, ready for a woman president. Are they ready for Hillary Clinton? She just has to give the green light, and then we will all find out. Well, we'll be watching. I thought they were talking about Michelle Obama, but we'll see. <laughs> Angela Rye and Patricia Murphy, thanks for your time. We'll Thank be you, right sir. back with one of the great moments of the 20th century. The election of Nelson Mandela. I was there. I saw it firsthand. And I'll never forget it. Stay with us.